Hey everyone, Hammer Dan here with Hammer Performance. So today we're going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble a bottom end for a 1991 to 2003 XL Sportster slash Buell motor. Um, so to run through real quick, uh, to get it to this point anyways, um, you're going to want to go and strip down the bike itself, basically taking the tank off all the way down to exhaust, air cleaner, uh, carburetor, manifold, rocker boxes, heads, cylinders, pistons, cam cover off, cams out, primary cover off, um, your clutch basket and motor sprocket assembly all come out, uh, your shifter mechanism comes out, and your transmission with five bolts come out of there. Um, and that's basically right here. Um, that's really easy. And you want to do this all in the bike. Um, that way you're looking at just the two case halves in the crank the way it is. Um, at that point, you're taking your motor mount on either side up front off and detaching the bolts in the back, uh, the plate in the back. Um, it makes it really, really easy to pull the bike out of the, uh, pull the motor out of the bike. Um, that way you can pick it up yourself, carry it to a bench, set it down. Um, otherwise, it's pretty damn heavy if you're trying to carry the whole motor out of there. You take a chance of scratching up the frame and everything else. So I've found the best way is to strip everything down as far as you can before you pull that thing out of there to put it to the bench. And once you do that, you're going to get it to this point here. Um, and then we want to go ahead and separate the cases. Very easy to do once you have the transmission out with the five bolts there. You're going to have another eight bolts. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across the bottom. Take those bolts out. Um, your crank is attached to the left case half side with a tapered Timken bearing that you can see right here. Now we've already prepped this crank and case and everything and put it together, but we're going to show you how to take it apart and put it all back together as if it were right out of the bike. So um, when you get it to this point, of course, the crank is going to be, you know, sucked to the left side of the case half. So the pinion bearing side will be the one that you that you remove. So once you get all the bolts out of there ready to go, a good rubber mallet here to start tapping, um, usually tapping over here and then tapping on the back side and walking back and forth to kind of get it to go in that and it'll slowly separate once you break the seal. And then at that point, you can kind of grab and wiggle and bam she comes right off of there so there's your your one case half side as you can see the crank is going to be secured to the other case half side so once you get it to this point we're going to need to go ahead and press the crank out now if you have a press in the shop great you can go ahead and do it right there uh, at the house or whatnot but uh, if you don't you know there's some options take it to a machine shop have them press it out, take it to a Harley Davidson dealership. A lot of times they'll be able to do it for you in the back or whatnot. Doesn't take much. We can show you how we do it here real quick to get the crank out of there. So we're gonna pick up the whole crank and flywheel assembly and we're gonna carry it over here. Just be very careful when you do move it around that you don't bugger up any of the pinion shaft or anything like that when you're carrying it. I use two 4x4 four four blocks in the press here. Make sure your rods aren't caught up on the blocks or anything there. Make sure they're free. Um, you're going to catch that crank. Now the reason I use a block is we want to get it to, su to support on this front portion, portion of the case half here and there's a dowel up there, an alignment dowel. So if you had something hard, then you wouldn't be, you're, you're going to be pushing at an angle. And you don't want to push at an angle. You eventually, ultimately, want to push it flat. So I bump these up to the flywheel assembly there. Um, we're going to go ahead, put this right on top there, snug that down, tighten it up. Now you're going to want to catch underneath, have somebody help you, whatever the case may be here start pushing it out make sure you don't get your rods cut up on the boards here because you'll end up bending stuff but we're going to go ahead and push until it gives way like that and then just pick up the whole crank and case half assembly we'll carry it back over here set her down we'll go ahead and just slide that right off of there Voila, your bearing and race will be in there still. Um, you can tap out the race, 
but we'll set that aside. So there you have it. Now you got your crank out of that case half. Um, you're going to have your end play shim in there with the other bad bearings. So you're going to want to take that bearing off. And again, this is where we get to some specialty tools that we screw onto the end. We'll show you here in a little bit when we go to put this back together. But you're going to want to pull the old race and bearing off of there. I normally cut the cage, pull all the bearings off, and then a three-jaw puller to grab onto that race and pull it up off of there. Um, that's the best way to do it. So, of course, now you're looking at a three-jaw puller to go ahead and pull that, that bearing off of there. So when you get it to this point, you're going to want to clean everything up really, really good. One thing that I suggest that's very important that we do here is we pull out our oil filter, uh, our oil filter um, uh, bolt here that holds the oil filter on. We pull that out and we slide out the, the check ball and spring behind that and clean those pieces out. And we leave that off while we clean the case halves. Last thing you want to do is go ahead and clean with solvents and everything else. And uh, on the cam box side there, get some solvents that go into the oil passage up to the oil filter housing area here and get all that goop, metal, whatever it may be, stuck behind that check ball. Because once you put it all back together and it opens that passageway, it's going to blow all that stuff right back into the motor. So it's a good idea to remove that when you're washing things out to make sure you clear those passages as well and don't get anything stuck behind there. So first thing you're going to want to do now when, we, when you go to get all new parts, we highly recommend that you change out the fifth gear the fifth gear bearing, transmission bearing there. <clears throat> there's been, a, you know, there's a lot of stress on that with the belt and rear tire and everything else from riding over the years. So it's a good cheap fix to, to swap that out as well when you're doing the case rebuild here. Um, the needle bearings, um, your call there if you want to change those out. It's not always necessary. Um, um, they're usually in pretty good shape, um, but you can press those out and press new ones in. Harley sells a tapered Timken bearing pack for the left case half side. You get the two bearings, the two races, the um, metal um, snap ring that goes in the middle between the two races, and uh, and you get they, it comes with a end play shim. That end play shim is usually really really big, so it's usually not the one to use. Um, they call it a complete package that you can put together, but. The, the last this one that we opened up had a hundred and twenty seven thou end play shim in there which is huge i don't know if they just put it in there for reference to to kind of figure out where you need to be but man if you left that hundred and twenty seven thou end play shim in there you'd have about fifteen thou of end play or so side to side and that's way way out of spec we want to see between two to five thou of end play there so um, first thing you'll want to do in prepping everything to get it to go back together is you're going to want to replace the two races and the snap ring that's in the middle of the two races here on the case side here. So if you can see in here, um, we'll go ahead and wipe this out so you can see. But you got the two tapered races here for the bearings. And then in between that is this snap ring that sits in between. Okay. Now, I'll be honest, a lot of guys that are doing this won't replace the snap ring. It's a pita to get out of there. Um, you need a special tool. Again, another special tool that's not cheap, and I don't even know if they make them anymore. We've had this one for quite some time. It clamps on to the snap ring in there on either side, usually 10 and 2 like that. Then you're able to grab it with the snap ring pliers there and, and uh, compress it down to pull it out of there to replace it. Um, we replace them just because we have the tool. A lot of guys will leave it in there uh, and won't replace it at all. They'll just replace the races. So... Next thing you're going to need to do is get those races out of there. We have a tapered tool here. It's a Jim's tool. Again, it's pretty expensive. I think it's like 150 bucks for this tool. So um, that's why a lot of people send us their bottom ends to have us rebuild and we have all the tools and they don't have to invest in those tools. But th this tool is going to go ahead on the small end and clip up underneath the snap ring in here like this and like that. And then you're going to put the shaft in there and put it in a press and go ahead and press out the races. And then you flip it over and do the other side. Um, you can flip it around this way to go ahead and press the races back in. Okay. We do, um, you can do it that way. That's one way of pressing them in. 
So again, we've got another tool that we use. Um, you know, we bought the Screaming Eagle Timken bearing uh, conversion tool for the twin cams. The smaller side, if you just sand it down ever so slightly, um, will will fit in here. So we normally set this on on the press, put that in like that, and now we're able to go ahead and press our races in right down hard and flush. Um, you want to make sure it's very important that you get both races in there. Make sure they're going the right way, tapered out. Um, make sure they're pressed really flush to the snap ring. That's very, very important. If you don't, your end play is going to be off when you go to set your end play. Um, so another way guys will do it is if they're, if they're doing it in their garage, they'll get a big washer on one side and another big washer, a couple big washers so it's thick and heavy, um, and they'll run a bolt. Uh, bolt through there with a nut and they'll tighten it super super tight to pull those two uh, two uh, bearing races together to that snap ring in the middle okay one of the most critical important things you need to do when doing this or pay attention to when you're doing the snap ring is to make sure that the opening of your snap ring is is up at the top to where this drain hole or this drain hole is here it, it, if you if it's rotated it'll cover that drain passage in there this drain hole goes down to the middle of that snap ring and that allows oil to go down in and lubricate both tapered bearings in here okay and then there's a hole over here on the um, race side that you can see where the the oil in the bearings will drain down there and come out here down here so it comes in on the top lubricates both tapered timken bearings and then drains out on the race side down here back into the sump into the bottom of the case so it's very very important when you put the snap ring in that you spin it so that the opening is allowing the oil passage to be free in there where the snap ring is if it's rotated like this you'll block that passage in there you'll starve the two bearings and you'll wreck your bottom end that's very very important Okay, so we got that all taken care of on this one, ready to go. We're all cleaned up on our cases and everything. Um, we're going to then go ahead and put this crank in our fi holding fixture over here. And again, if you're doing any crank work, having us do the crank work, rebuilding the crank, you want to have all that taken care of, ready to go. Okay. So when we get it to this point, the first thing you want to do is lubricate your tapered bearing and you're going to want to press it on the crank. So again, this is our end play spacer there. Sorry about that. Okay, so the, the specialty tool, again, another Jim's tool to be able to press the bearings on. Um, it's not cheap. It's $300 or so for the tool. So. Again, another reason why a lot of guys won't do this themselves, but you're going to go ahead and screw that on there onto the shaft. You're going to put your bearing on there, and then it comes with spacers to put over. Okay, so we can go small, small like this, and then a little bit bigger. Um, and, then, um, and then you can go ahead and put your, your uh, bolt on here to go ahead and tighten it down and press that bearing all the way down to the bottom. You want to press it all the way down. This is going to press on the inner race of that bearing. We're going to press it all the way down to the crank so it's on there nice and tight. Um, once you get that done, then the next step is to go ahead and grab the case half. So we'll grab our case half and our bearing here. We're going to carry this over. So we're going to set our case half on. Like that, and we'll set it right down on that bearing. OK, so at this point, we need to check end play. This is very important to set our end play here. We want to see between two to five thou of end play. OK, and end play is the movement of the crank side to side within the bearing, your tapered bearings that are pressed together. OK, so we do it in a two shot process. We're going to go ahead and put that 127 thou, which is like the biggest one we've seen as far as an end play spacer. We're going to go ahead and put that one in there. We're going to put the bearing on with that spacer in there and we're going to press it down tight because it's going to press the inside races to that, uh, to that uh, end play spacer that's in there. Okay. And that gives us the end play on the races there side to side. Um, with the 20, 127 thou uh, spacer there, 
Um, we're going to then go ahead and put the dial indicator on and check our end play and see where we're at minus our numbers to get us to where we need to be. So if we're, if we're at 120 thou and, and, uh, and um, we need, say, 3 thou of end play, okay, and we, and we, we put the 120 thou spacer in there, we pull up and we're at um, 110 thou, that means we have 10 thou of, of end play in there minus the 3 thou gives us seven thou left over so we want to take seven thou from that hundred and twenty thou and we want to put a hundred a hundred and thirteen thou spacer in there to give us that three thou of end play we've already done the math and everything um, and, and set end play so we're going to put our spacer in there we're going to then go ahead and stick our bearing in there and again we got our shaft on there we're going to put our tools on here this and we're going to go ahead and tighten down this bearing so when we do this you want to make sure your rods stay between uh, your two cylinder bore openings there don't get it caught underneath like this when you start pressing down you can go ahead and break the cases and and bend rods and everything else so it's very important that you make sure you stay here And again, we have a tool that actually holds our crank for us here. Um, they don't make this tool anymore. Um, a lot of times you can use a coffee can. That's another sweet tool that we have that we use to send the crank, set the crank on top of. Um, while we do this as well, you may need someone else to help you or whatnot to hold it. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and just keep an eye on our rods. We're gonna tighten this bearing all the way down. Okay, so. We got her tight we're going to snug it really really good okay and we're going to leave it snugged just to show you end play here you're going to need a dial indicator okay and a holder for the dial indicator so we're going to screw that on there snug that down then we're going to bring this right over to the top here we're going to set this down right on the top of there and then we're going to set it to zero when we check our end play here. Somewhere close like that. And then you're just gonna pick up the case half and see where we're at. So we're at about two thou, as you can see there. Two thou of end play. Double check, get us right on the zero. A little over two thou. So we're within our spec. We normally want to see between two to five thou. Okay, so we're good to go there. Street bike application, around the two to three thou, somewhere in there. Normally, if you're setting up for a race bike application, we like to see probably closer to four, maybe five, somewhere in there, a little bit looser, less drag, that type deal. So. Racing application a little bit looser, street bike application two to three thou works really, really well. Okay, so at this point we have our crank in there. We're gonna go ahead and loosen our tool. Pull that off of there. Okay, so we got half the battle done. We got our end place set. We got the crank in there with our new bearings all lubricated up, ready to go. Um, the next step is, to gonna, is gonna be to work on the pinion shaft side with our pinion bearing here, okay? This is, you know, and again, so we have a specialty tool over there to be able to press the bearings on, press them off. Um, if you come up with some creative ways to do it, um, you maybe take it to a shop and have them do it for you type deal. Um, but again, you're seeing a lot of kind of specialty tools here that we need to be able to accomplish these tasks. Um, the next step is to figure out our pinion bearing. 
Harley has a color-coded chart um, for all the different size pinion bearings. Um, what you're going to want to do is when you, when you go to measure, you're going to take your pinion bearing off of here. You're going to measure the outside diameter of your pinion bearing shaft here where the, where the, the bearing goes. You're going to measure that with a micrometer. Okay, and write that number down all the way down to tenths of thousandths. It's very important that it's very accurate. Um, so you're going to need a micrometer um, to measure that. The next step is going to be measuring the inside diameter of your pinion race here. Okay, so again, you need a small bore gauge that measures all the way down to tenths of thousandths. Okay, not just thousandths, tenths of thousandths. So again, two more specialty tools that can be kind of expensive if you don't have them or you got to take it to a machine shop or something of that nature to go ahead and have them do those measurements for you and be very, very accurate with that measurement. Once you have those measurements, you know the inside diameter of the outside pinion race and you know the outside diameter of the inside pinion race on the crank, then you can take those two numbers this is a color-coded chart from the Harley manual itself, the pinion shaft bearing selection. You see the different colored bearings on here. So we have our outer race inside diameter, and we have our inner race outside diameter on the crank itself. You're going to cross-reference wherever you're at numbers-wise, okay, over and what color, and that'll tell you what color that you need, okay. Um, we have got a green in here for this one. Our pinion rate, our pinion race on our crank was a little bit bigger in diameter, and we are right at size with our uh, inside diameter race, so we put a green in. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and put lubricate your bearing. Go ahead and slide it on there. Put your snap ring back on there. Again, there's no holes for that snap ring, so you need a specialty tool to do that. which is going to be this tool here, okay? This is a snap ring tool, specialty tool or whatnot to separate, again, with no holes for a snap, snap ring pliers itself, okay? So at this point, um, we get our bearing all set up for the proper color with our pinion race there, um, and uh, we're ready to go ahead and put this thing together. Um, when we go to put this together, you're going to want to make sure your two case halves are cleaned really well. Get any goop or gunk or any old silicone off of the case halves there. Um, make sure they're cleaned really, really well. Um, and then in your final, you're going to want to make sure you rub them down with brake clean, okay, to make sure there's no fingerprints or oil or anything on there. This is also another very, very important check because if you do not get this right, and you have oil, grease, or anything like that on your case halves, when you go to put it together, it's not going to stick. You're going to go through this whole process. You're going to rebuild the whole motor in the bike, get it all in there, get it all set up. And you're going to go start the bike with fresh oil in it, and you're going to leak out the bottom. You're going to be cussing some nasty words because uh, you got an oil leak out the bottom. It's got to come all the way back apart again to reseal the case halves. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Alex to go ahead and, uh, and lubricate this up to show you guys how to do it. Got some brake clean here. Get this on. Get the mic set up while you're doing it. Get off the cord. And just take a clean rag here. We already cleaned these. Um, some are better than others. You can take like a, uh, I don't know what they call them, like the deburring wheels with the light pad and just clean up the old gasket and then wipe it down with some brake clean at the end. But we already did it, so we're just going to kind of get any grease or anything from handling it off of there. Wipe her down. Both sides. time as well with fresh brake clean. Go over this side first. Cool. 
cool. All set. Um, not sure what the factory says to use, but we use uh, 3Bond 1184 to seal the cases. We use it for a few other things too, um, but it works really well for this application. It's a little, little messy, but uh, with practice, you can kind of keep it in control. So it doesn't take a whole lot. You don't want it squirting out the, the cases when you kind of put them together, but you want just enough so that it seals properly. And then just kind of pick a spot and um, put a little on your finger, start dragging it. You want it thick enough to where it doesn't just immediately dry on you. Um, but like I said, thin enough to where it's not just squirting out everywhere at the end. You're going to end up doing both case halves, so keep in mind when you do the both case halves, you're going to squeeze them together. So if you have too much excess, then it's just going to run everywhere. Yeah, make sure you coat everything pretty evenly. If you miss a spot, it's going to leak. You want to be kind of quick too. I don't want it drying on you. Again, cleanliness is super important at this point in time just to make sure you don't have to tear it apart and do it again. It does take a little while to dry when you use the 3 bond 1184. Um, so you do have a little bit of time, but it does start to get pretty tacky as you go along. Just want to make sure you don't excessively overdo it here um, because then you squeeze inside the cases as well. And, and if you get too much, there's a chance that. Um, it, it gets you know entwined up some of the uh, you know the crank holes and whatnot and then uh, you know could cause oil failure or, you know uh, less oil in the crank or whatnot and seize up bearings and things like that so um, there's a fine line here when you do it and keep in mind you're out you're gonna do both case halves so you're you know a little on one and a little on another means decent amount on both yeah, I'm just double checking. Um, when it dries, you can kind of see any spots that you missed a little bit better. Just go back over and make sure it's all coated. We'll do the other half now. And it's good too, as you go to seal this, that you prep your bolts, your, your, uh, your case half bolts, the eight ones that you have by cleaning them off, getting any, any silicone that's on those bolts or anything of that nature, cleaning those up and kind of prepping those and having those ready. So when you go ahead and put the case halves together, you're, you're ready to, to go ahead and put the bolts in and torque them down. You know, again, a lot of guys will just send us the case halves. Um, you know, I think we charge probably, you know, a couple, 200, 250 bucks to go ahead and do all this work. 
um, replacing bearings and everything for you. Um, it's pretty cost effective. Guys will go ahead and ship us the bottom end in a Rubbermaid tub, uh, pack really, really well, and then they'll just drill holes in the top of the lid through the lip in the lid and zip tie it closed. Um, it comes in under the, you know, the UPS weight limits as far as shipping goes. Um, it's not super, super expensive. So, you know, to save on the tools and everything else, a lot of guys will go ahead and just send us the bottom end and have us rebuild it, especially if we're doing a crank conversion or something of that nature there, rebuilding the stock crank. Hey, we're pretty much ready. Just double check. One other quick thing too is make sure you get between the cylinders over here. This yeah. is very important. Some sometimes you'll forget. Easy to so it's easy to forget. So miss. keep that in mind. Okay, I'll double check this one again. Looking good. Okay, ready to slide it on. Flip her over. Just be careful. You want to have this already lubed up. Um, maybe lube, put a little bit of lube on your race when you go to put this on, just so you're not, you know, scratching the the race too much. But be really careful. Just line it up the best you can. I kind of get the the pinion started, um, and then just line it up. Line the two case house up the best you can and start wiggling. Just be really careful. And once you get it here, go ahead and oop, that's the mic. Just start pressing it together. Um, ready to go. Bolt this together. Flip her around. Okay. Got it. This time, you, again, we only have eight bolt holes here. You have the one here, one here, one up here, and one up here in the front, and then you have the four across the bottom. So these are already cleaned up. Um, the manual doesn't call for it, and we suggest that you don't use any Loctite on, on the bolts. Um, usually when you're screwing them in, you'll get a little bit of three bond or whatever sealant you're going to use, and that's enough to hold the the cases and the sealant itself between the halves to, to hold the cases together. And the reason why we don't suggest using Loctite is because I've found where I've had to disassemble a case for if I miss something after I've sealed it really quick, I've taken it apart and uh, the Loctite, the blue Loctite is squeegeed off of the bolt of course and worked its way down between the two case halves um, through the three bond and I just looked at that and said, man, that is just definitely a potential oil leak waiting to happen there. So, um, you know, the manual doesn't call for any Loctite on the case bolts. Um, so, again, don't do it. You take a chance of causing an oil leak there. Okay, and I'll just get these close to being uh, tight. Just kind of hand tight if you can. We're going to torque them down. Okay, ready to torque it. Um, later model cases, all the bolts are the, um, not sure what they are, but the larger diameter. 5 16 So uh, the factory manual calls for 
think it's 15 to 18 foot pounds. We're going to go to the upper end of that spec at 17. Um, you look in your manual, but most of the cases don't have a, a set order, but on, just on the later models, they do not the early model case. So just be a little bit, um, you know, when you're going do opposite, if you can, and, uh, just use your best judgment on that. So over here, it's not a lot. So let's go slow. That one. We'll do one down here. Let me get a hand over here. I'm gonna hold this. Move it around here. Like that. up these guys on the bottom. Okay, there you have it. It's two halves together. Transmission will hold the, the rest of it, so yeah, it's it's all held over here, but if you put enough sealant on there, um, you'll be fine when you go to bolt the transmission on there. Okay, so we got it together. Once we get it together, you know, spin the crank, make sure she spins nice and free. Man, that feels like horsepower. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so we got everything spinning free. A um, Couple more things we wanna do here. We're gonna go ahead and put in our fifth gear transmission bearing back here. Ross, you grab me the oil, green oil. So on the fifth gear transmission, this is kind of a slip fit, not a press fit, a slip fit. I suggest taking just a, t just a tad bit, a little bit of oil to put on this outside of the bearing. And I'm talking a very minimal, minimal, minimal amount here um, just to help it. We're gonna lubricate up the outside of that. Just, I mean, just what's on my finger inside here. I'm gonna go ahead and set that bearing in there. And again, this is a slip fit. This is not a press fit. So it goes on there pretty reasonably well. Um, again, I have an old bearing race that we use to put it in. You never want to tap on bearings. When you put bearings in, you never want to tap on the inner race that's forcing the bearings. You always want to tap on the outer race if it's going into something like this. If you're pulling anything through the middle here, you want to pull on the inner race, not the outer race. So we're going to go ahead and just tap this with a rubber mallet around. Get it started there. Once we get it on the outside, now this is a slip fit, so it goes in pretty easy here as we do this. Now be careful tapping this in. I suggest a rubber mallet. You'll hear it change tone once you get it all the way in there, so don't get crazy with it. It's very thin on the bottom side, so you can blow that bottom back side out of your cases. So just be very careful as you're tapping it in. You'll hear the change in tone when it bottoms itself out. So once we get it bottomed out there, um, we're then ready to go ahead and put in our snap ring. Clean up your snap ring. We have a big snap ring players to do this since this is a pretty stout snap ring here. We're going to go ahead and set that in there. And this is a lockable snap ring for us. So as we go smaller, it locks itself. You're going to go all the way down to get that baby in there and go ahead and release the lock. And it should go right down in there. 
you just want to take and press around that thing make sure she's in there really really good okay we're in there good there you go so we got the fifth gear transmission bearing in it's pretty painless um, but that's very very important um, the next step is going to be ross will you grab me some red line assembly lube please so the next step we're going to go ahead and put it in our fifth gear itself okay um, again we're going to want to go ahead and lubricate clean it up good with brake clean lubricate on here not a lot just get some in there so we get a little bit of easiness with this thing coming in okay just a little bit on the inside of this bearing as well to help it pull through now before you put the before you put this in we're going to go ahead and just lubricate our roller bearings in here inside this thing just helps on initial startup in the transmission there you got two roller bearings one on each side we're just going to go ahead and lubricate up in there as well Okay, grab the specialty tool here, tools. So will you grab me the big socket off of that? Oh yeah, in the washer. Okay, so again i made this tool way back in the day in my drag racing days to go ahead and pull this fifth gear uh, transmission sprocket in there um, basically a big washer smaller washer long bolt um, we're going to go ahead and all the way through be careful with the bearings that washer just kind of sits you know on the back of that to hold it there um, you can devise something like this to to help um, so I pull that all the way through there, get it to come through like that. I have a big socket. This is actually an inch and seven eighths socket. We use it to press bearings on on the crank and everything. Fits over this perfectly and it rests on the inner bearing race there perfectly. And it's big enough in diameter inside to allow the fifth gear sprocket to come through. So we're going to put that on there with a washer, bolt, or a nut. We're going to kind of center that best we can. We have it on there like that. Okay. So in order to make this work, I know it looks kind of cockamamie, but hey, it works. There's a hole here on this uh, socket. I go ahead and put a punch in there, speed wrench to tighten it. And we're going to go ahead and start pulling that bad boy through there. Comes through pretty easy. We're pulling on the inside of the bearing race there. Works like a charm. I've worked it, worked, used it for years. You can feel it tighten up. We're going to go ahead and snug tight until we know for sure it's all the way in. And then we're going to loosen. It's that simple. That way we're not wrecking our fifth gear bearing there. Pulling on the inner race on anything inside and tapping on the outer race to put it into something. Pull that through. Voila, we're good. Again, specialty tool. <laughs> Maybe cost you 15 bucks, 10 bucks at the store for all the parts. Used it for years. Okay, so we got the bearing in there. Everything looks good. Next thing we're going to want to do is just lubricate that bearing. So you can pour some motor oil in there, whatever you, whatever you think, just to kind of lubricate. And again, we're just initial startup to get it going here. So we're just getting some lube as I spin it around here. Like that. Okay, 
perfect. Okay, so the next is going to be the seals. Got to make sure you put this kind of square seal. If you get a kit or you can buy them individually, that's the next seal that goes on there. That's going to go right over your shaft there, all the way down flush. Okay, um, next is going to be your rubber seal and your spacer. Okay, now your spacer is going to be 90 degree on one side and have a tapered angle on another side there. Okay, tapered angle, 90 degree. You can see that. The tapered angle has to go in because that rubber seal that I just put on there is going to sit in that tapered angle area. Okay, so we're going to slide that over and that's going to press down and that rubber seal seals everything there. And then we're going to take, actually we're going to do this a little differently. We're going to put the spacer in our seal so it's on our seal like that. Okay. Then we're going to slide it over, and now we're going to tap in with a rubber mallet, a rubber seal. You can, if you want, if you, you know, are really anal to an extent, you can put some 1184 gray seal on the outside of this seal, but it, it's a pretty tough press fit in there. It's not necessary but you surely can if you wanted to. We're gonna tap that around, push our seal in, voila, we are good to go. Seal on, we have our little seal inside behind our spacer there, and we're pressed in. So there you have it, the fifth gear transmission. The last seal is gonna be your little cap that goes in here and you can just push that in with your hand. Okay, that's gonna be the last seal that goes on is the little cap there. Other than that, the only other seal that we're working with um, is going to be our race, our motor sprocket shaft seal that goes in here. Want to just clean out your area there as well. Okay, Ross, will you grab me the little ball peen? So on this seal, Again, you can put just a dab of oil on the outside of this. It's going to press in there very, very tight. Now, they make seal drivers, right? You can spend hundreds on a seal driver, which I don't think works nearly as good. Okay. And again, we have our race here. So we can put our race on like that with our seal. Slide that over, kind of holds everything in place. And then we're just going to go ahead and tap this seal, get it started. Once she goes, she'll go right down in there. just tapping it flush if you wanted to put some 1184 sealant on there you surely could just be careful not to put too much because you don't want that sealant going behind into the bearings in the back in there okay I would suggest just a minimal minimal amount there but you're just going to go ahead and tap it flush. That's all you're doing there. there it's, it's bowing out and stretching out to seal that really, really well. We have our spacer in there now as well. At this point, the cases are done. Um, they're ready to go. They're sealed. We have a new fifth gear bearing with our new transmission bearing. We have our new oil seal with the spacer. You're going to clean all those parts, parts up, of course. Um, we got our new seal as well. Spins really, really nice. We set our end play. We got our color-coded bearing prepped properly on that side. So there you have it, that's it. And like Alan or Alex had said earlier, five transmission bolts will definitely snug that backside together. With all the other bolts, the way they're torqued right now, it's gonna pull that backside and that sealant is going to seal to each other and bond to each other. So when you eventually get the transmission in there, um, it'll, it'll force all that together and hold it uh, where it's at. At this point, 
we're ready to take this thing back into the motor and or into the bike and put it in into the bike with uh, the motor mounts and everything and setting it up and then at that point you're ready to start bolting things on transmission back in primary all together cams in and then working your way all the way up to the top so there you have it that's what we got as far as um, assembling a bottom end um, new bearings and everything else so if you have questions post down below um, follow us on Facebook or like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and don't forget, check us out on our YouTube channel. Peace out.